So journal entry is a question of errors. We said, I already said that a journal is a book of original entry or a book of prime entry. What do we do with this book? We record our credit transactions into them before entry them into the ledger. So let's go down. Introduction. The journal or general journal is a book of prime entry. Explain how all the transactions are recorded in the book of prime entry before they are entered into the ledger. We talked about that in chapter seven. So, the introduction. The journal, okay. The journal is not part of the double entry bookkeeping. It is regarded as, it is regarded as a diary in which all transactions are noted before they are being recorded in the ledger. So a journal is not going to, a journal is not is not to be considered as a book of uh, as a double entry book record. It is only a, a a diary or just a note stating that we have all these records. And sometimes you know you could have a credit customer purchasing or buying on credit in different dates. So you have the journal to be able to compile those lists together, then to put them on one account in the ledger. So the journal allows you to to have a record a, to be able to keep track of all the credit customers' record before you transfer them into the ledger. Because if every day that passes by, you need to open a ledger for each transaction that is done by the customer, then you're going to have a lot of paperwork. So it's it's okay, it's ideal to have the journal where you have records of each co credit customers, record of each credit suppliers, then you are able to compile them together at the end of the, the month to transfer them each account into their ledger. Do they have a balance on them? Yeah, no, the journal. Yeah. The journal will have the total balance for debtors. It's going to have the total balance of debtors. So as soon as you open each individual account, the total of each, each the total of the, each, each individual account must balance with the total in the journal. So you have customer A, B, C, D, E, F buying on credit from you. They are all debtors. Yes, so they yes they have different accounts name different ledger mm -hmm. but they are all debtors so your to the total in the journal must be equal to the sum of all your ledgers for the debtors is it clear so the journal is not okay let's say anything which is not entered in one of the book books of prime entry must be entered in the journal before being recorded in the ledger so a journal entry shows one the date of the transaction that's the date into in which you sold on credit the name of the account will be debited and the amount. That means the name of that debtor, the name of account will be credited, the name of that supplier, and the narrative. So the narrative consists of a brief explanation of what is being recorded and why the entry is being made. This is useful because it is impossible to remember the reason for every entry. And the entries in the journal sometimes involve unusual transactions. So you have the journal because with the journal, you are able to you know, make a transaction, you are able to record different situations that surround your invoice. You know, a, uh, you might be selling to a, co a credit customer who maybe have to pay a certain amount of money. Maybe he or she is being given a discount. With this journal, you'll be able to state details about different transactions. It allows you, it allows you to state details about each transaction, which you cannot do with the ledger. The ledger is just to post the details, the amount, and that's all. What about but, narrative? What? Narrative. What does narrative mean? Narrative means details. Details. Yeah. He bought seven, he bought seven uh seven bags of laptops, or he bought seven laptops. Yes. He paid for three. Oh, give him all the check of these are the narrative about the transaction. You can't write all these things in the in your ledger. Yes. So the journal acts as a diary. For each customer or supplier's transaction. So more detailed one. Yeah, it's detailed. Yes. But it doesn't have double entry. Yeah, one entry. Is it clear? Yes. So here we, this is how a journal is, this is how a journal looks like. The days, the dates, the details, the folio, debit and credit. The account you are supposed to debit, the account you are supposed to credit. The item usually record the journal, recorded in the journal are opening entries, purchases and sales of non-current assets, non-regular transactions such as year-end transfers. Correction of errors. So in the journal, you have your opening entry. That's the amount of money you're starting with or the amount of the balance you're starting with. The capital. Yeah, it could be the capital. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you're starting off your business with. Yes. Then you have the purchase and sale of non-point assets. When you sold assets. 
because you cannot record sale, sold assets in your statement of income. You cannot record them in your income statement. Yes, you yes. record them in your journal. So yeah, that's yeah. where you can make the analysis. The non-current assets, right? Yeah, non-current assets. That means use of assets that you're not using anymore. You might have to sell them. But, but are you going to depreciate it? I mean, the amount of depreciation, are you going to do it? No. Or not? We're talking about sales of non-current assets. We're talking about equipment, machinery, yes. motor vehicle that the business is no more using, that the business is disposing. I mean, it will depreciate then. Yeah. What about the figure you have? You record it in your journal. After the depreciation. Yeah. It, yeah. As soon as you sell it, you're going to record the value at which you sell. The depreciation is done, but the amount you sold that asset, that non foreign asset, is what you record in your journal because you cannot record it as profit or sales of inventory yeah. in your income statement. So you record it in your journal. Yeah. And when you have to correct errors from your trial balance, you record them in your journal. So open journal entry, so we start. As name suggests, Opening journal entries are made when the business starts or when the business first keep account, keeps accounting record. An opening journal entry lists the assets owned by the business, which is shown on the debit side, which is shown on the debit column, and the liabilities owned by the business shown in the credit column, and the capital of the business also shown in the credit column. So, in your journal, you have the debit entry or the debit column, which shows about the assets of the business. The credit column shows the capital of the business and the liabilities of the business. That's what in general is about. I think it's clear. Yes. Okay. Now we have a transaction. Chanda started business on 1st of November 24. He did not maintain any accounting records during his first year of trading. On 1st November 25, he was able to provide the following information about his business. Asset premises of 56,000, fixtures, motor vehicle, inventory, trade receivables, and cash. Then we have the liability trade tables, 5,600, then bank overdraft. So your journal, when you have to prepare an open entry for this journal, you have your date, details, mm -hmm. the folio, the debit, and the credit. So on your, on, when you are preparing the journal, the date of the transactions is on the 1st of November, you write it. Mm -hmm. Then the details, what type of items are we talking about? Are they assets or liabilities? You write them. The name of that item on the details. Premises, for example, example premises. Premises an asset of the business, and assets, are recorded in the debit side of the transaction. So you record assets in the debit side. Fixture is an asset to be recorded on the debit side. Inventory, motor vehicle is also an asset. These are the three non-current assets. You record the non-current assets before the current assets. Then we have inventory, which is also a, uh, a current asset. Trade receivable, which is your debtors, you record them. The cash at hand, you record it. Then you have your liabilities. The trade variables, the bank, which is an overdraft, and the yes. capital. No, there are two banks. It could be cash at bank. If it is cash at bank, that's the amount of money you have in your bank statement. But the bank here is an overdraft, which is your debit balance. That, the debit balance in your bank statement. What if they say bank, that means about bank. Oh. Overdraft. But if it's bank, a cash, cash at bank. Cash at bank. That's an asset. It's a non current asset. Yes. Clear, right? Yes. So that's how you complete your journal entry. So it is usual to show the debit entries first. It is usual to slightly indent the credit entries. It is usual to draw a line after each separate journal entry. The capital was calculated as the difference between the assets and liabilities. So your, your journal will balance because capital is the difference between your asset and yeah. liabilities. So now, as soon as the journal entry is done, you have to record each transaction, each item into the ledger. So we start with the ledger. We have the premises account. The de debit entry, yes. you, premises account has a debit balance. Fixtures account has a debit balance. Motor vehicle account will have a debit balance, yes. Inventory will also have a debit balance, yes or no? Yes, yes. Your capital account will have a balance, which is a credit entry. Yes. Then cash book, your cash, we're talking about your cash book here. You have the cash at bank, which is 200. And it said they have the bank cash bank overdraft of 2,300. There's an overdraft of 2,300. So it has to be on the credit side of the transaction of the ledger. Mm. Do you get it? Yes. This is your cash book. Your cash book has the cash column and the bank column. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. So the cash column or the debit side of your cash book is, oh. is equivalent to the credit side of your bank statement. 
So that means as an here, the cash book is having a debit balance of 200, which is that, that's the amount of money you have for cash at hand. But there's a debit balance in your bank statements for the bank overdraft of 2,300. So it goes to the credit side of your cash book bank color. No, it's both credit. At the journalist's uh, credit as a bank. But uh, I'm talking about your cash book. Yeah, like the cash book also has a credit. Yes. A bank, yeah. I said, when your, your cash book will have both the debit side and the credit side. The debit side of your cash book is the equivalent to the credit side of your bank statement. Bank column. There's cash at bank, there's cash at hand. Yes, yes or no? Yes. The cash we have in this cash book is the cash at hand. Well, if we have a bank statement with a credit balance, it's going to be on the debit side. It's, if we have a bank statement with a credit balance, it's going to be on the debit side, bank column of our cash book. Yeah, if we have, yeah. But here, we have an overdraft, which means we are having a bank statement with a debit balance. So a bank statement with a debit balance will be recorded on the, in the credit side of your cash book, mm -hmm. bank column. That is what I'm saying. Yes. I think it's clear. Yes. So no names and amounts is of individual credit customers and credit suppliers were provided in this question. So in practice, there will be no. So we don't have account name. We only have premises account, uh, fixtures account, motor vehicle account. But when we have to do analysis, you're not just going to have assets as a business. You would have sold on credit. You would have purchased on credit. Mm -hmm. So that's what they are trying to tell you here, that in the future, the transaction is not just going to be about asset and liabilities. They're going to be also about sales and purchases. Now go to purchases, purchase and sale of non-current assets. Are you there? Yes. As the purchase of sales of non-current assets, as the purchase of sales of non-current assets are not recorded in one of the other books of parliamentary, they should be entered in the journal before being posted to the ledger. So for purchases, uh, for purchase and sale of non-current assets, when you sell non-current assets, you know you cannot record them in the book of parliamentary. You can you should only record them in your journal. And as soon as you do that, you record them in your ledger. You post them into, also into the ledger. Assets that you sell, purchase, make, are not supposed to be recorded in, in the book of prime entry. They are supposed to be recorded in your journal. And as soon as you record them in your journal, the next thing you have to do is to produce, uh, to record them in your ledger. Assets that you sold. Yes, no Purchases that you do. You don't record them in the books of a prime entry. You record them in the journal. And as soon as you record them in the journal, you make them transfer to the ledger. So here we have this. They said, Chandler Financial Year ends on 31st of October. Prepare the journal entries to record the following transactions on September 26th. Purchase additional fixture for 1,300 on credit from office supplies. So the motor vehicle cost 12,500 for 7,500 on credit to use vehicle limited. So in the journal, we have our journal for fixture. Yes. Fixture is 1,300 purchased. So the debit side of our journal, we have fixtures purchased for 1,300. But who did we purchase it from? Office supplies. Office supply gave us the, fist, uh, the fixtures, yes or no? Yes. So office supplies will be credited. For the same transaction, are you getting it or not? We purchased additional fixtures for 1,300. Mm. In your journal, you have to record it in your journal, isn't it? Yes. To record it in your journal, fixtures account will have a debit balance. Because fixtures has been received from office supplies. Yes. So office supplies will have a credit balance. Because office supply sold fixtures to Chandra. On credit. On credit. So what is the narrative? Purchases of fixtures on credit. That is a transaction. So that is the whole of that transaction. Goods were purchased on credit. Yes or no? Yes. From office supplies. Office supplies have given out the goods. So in the journal, office supply will have a credit balance. Fixtures will have a debit balance. The narrative will be purchases of fixtures on credit. credit. Now, so it's like an out. Yes, in and out, yes. 
A note, note. A note, it's a note, yeah, and it's in and out. Oh, yeah. In and out, yes. Oh, yeah. So, disposal of motor vehicle, because we sold a non coin asset, yes or no? Yeah. So, selling a non coin asset means that we are disposing an asset. Disposal of the motor vehicle is 12,000. That's the value of the motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, the disposal of motor vehicle account will have a debit balance. Motor vehicle itself will have a credit balance because motor vehicle is going to be sold. It's given out. Yes or no? Yes. We sold it to used vehicles month limited. The amount we sold it is 7,400 based on what disposal of motor vehicle 7,400. First, you record the transaction, the value of the assets. You record the value of the non coin assets in your journal. Yes. And you record the value at which it's been disposed. You can't just write the value at which it's been disposed. They will ask you, what, what is the value of the asset? It should have been, there should be a value for that asset before you dispose it of. Yes, yes. So you have to write the value. You have to state the value of that asset in your journal before the value at which you are disposing it. Do you get it? Yes, I get it. Now, the transaction will be transfer of motor vehicle to disposable account and sale of motor vehicle on credit. You know, remember when you have when you have, when you have disposal, when you have to sell an asset, you have to you have to open a disposal account for the sale of asset. Yes or no? Yes. So the disposal account will have what will have a credit balance, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Because the asset is having a debit balance, is having a debit entry, and when you are disposing it, it should be a credit because it's going out. So that is what it's been said here. So the difference between the 7,400 and 12,500 is what goes to your income statements. The value of the assets minus the amount is being disposed is what goes to your income statements. The net book value, do you yes, get what I'm saying? Yes, I get yeah. The asset is worth 12,500. Yeah, you are disposing it for 7,400. So the difference between the amount you are disposing and the value, the, the historic value, is what you post in your income statement. So your income statement will have a debit entry of 5,500, 5,100. Yes. And your ledger will be having disposable of motor vehicle from 5,100. Because you have a disposable account, isn't it? Yes. So your disposable account will be recorded as in, the income there. It will be 5,100. For sale, you're going to have your disposable account ledger, yes or no? Yes. The details there will be sales of non current assets for 5,100 disposable accounts. So they sold the. Uh, it's the sales of assets. Yes. So your narrative would be what? Loss on disposal transfer to the income statement because it's a loss. You sold, you bought for 12,500, you are selling for 7,400. You lost 5,100. So that is a loss on disposal of assets. So that's the transfer, uh, that's the analysis. The first one is fixtures. Fixtures doesn't have any balance. So you record it normally. Office supply sold fixtures to us, it's a credit entry. We bought fixtures, it's a debit entry. The narrative will be purchases of fixtures on credit. Then there's a disposal of motor vehicle. You write the value of the motor vehicle. You debit entry of the motor vehicle, then the motor vehicle account will have a credit entry. Then, which business are you selling it to? Use vehicles limited. Use vehicles limited is receiving the motor vehicle sold. Then, the account that is selling is a disposal of, of motor vehicle account, which is going to have a credit entry. The narrative will be the transfer of motor vehicles to disposable account and the sale of motor, motor on credit because it's sold on credit. So the difference between the value of that asset and the uh, and the the value of the disposal goes to your income statement, but now it's going to be a, a loss, not profit. It is will be profit if the value of the uh, the amount you sold it is higher than the value you bought it. They can talk about a profit on disposal of transfer income statement. Do you get it? No, it's. Uh... If it was uh, more than the residual value. It's a profit. If it's more than the residual value. 
if it is more than the store value. Yeah, the residual value, right? Residual value is after depreciation. Yeah, they. Uh, I think they they have. They like. Give residual value. Like, residual value is the amount the goods the for the assets worth after its economic life. Yes, so true. it's what the value of the, the historic cost is one thousand. It has five years, and after five years. The value becomes two fifty. So that's the residual value. But if it has more than the value of the residual value, it will be like for profit. A profit, yes. Yeah, Is it clear? Yes. So go to non-regular transactions. As I explained earlier, any transaction which cannot be recorded in another book of prime entry are recorded in the journal. This often consists of transactions which are not occurring regularly and year-end transactions to the income statement. The transaction is posted to the appropriate ledger accounts after the journal entry is completed. completed. There are some transactions that are not regular. These things, they come once in a while. You don't need to have a ledger for them. Because these transactions are not constant. They are not normal debtors or creditors. They are transactions that are irregular. Yes. So what you have to do is just record them in your journal. So, you have to say, this often consists of transactions which are not occurring okay, here. Yeah. The, the transaction is posted to the appropriate ledger account after the journal is completed. So you just complete a ledger account for that. Example of those transactions are irrecoverable debts. They are not things that are constantly coming. They are not like a regular account. It's an account yes. that would show up when you sell on credit, when the debt goes back. So it's just one account that you have. It's not going to be like, you're going to have it every now and then. Mm -hmm. So this type of account, you just have to, you, you don't have, you don't, you will not see them so much. If the de debt goes bad, not all the customers will come back to pay. Some few of them will come back to pay. So you wouldn't expect irrecoverable accounts to be like so much in that transaction. No, maybe one or two. Do you understand? Yes. So here we have this exchange of financial year ends on 31st October. It provided the following information for the year end of transaction. Irrecoverable debt written off up to 30 October 26 amounted to 140. On 31st of October 26, it was decided to write off as irrecoverable debt a debt. It write off as irrecoverable a debt of $50 owned by Ansari stops. Create a provision for doubtful debt of $250. Now we have to prepare a journal entry to record the decision made on 31st of October. And we said, Chandra Financial Year ends on 31st of October. It provided the following information for the year end 31 October 26. It is a year end. Yes. So the year end what wouldn't come every year, it wouldn't come at the end of each month. It comes at the end of the year. That means one. Yes, yes or no? Yes. So year-end transactions should be recorded in your journal because they are irregular transactions. Isn't it? Yes. Good. Now, irrecoverable debt written off up to 30th of October, 26 amounted to 140. So the total debt written off until that time was $140. This goes to your income statement. The 140. Yeah, it's an irrecoverable debt account. In your irrecoverable debt account, you're going to have 140. With enough. Good. On 31st of October 26, it was decided to write off as irrecoverable debt a fifth of $50 owing by Ansari Stops. Ansari Stops, it was decided at the, on the 30th, 31st of October to write off Ansari Stores debt. Yes. So it is not part of the $140 that were written off before now. There's the irrecoverable debt account already, which is, which, which is some, or which, Sum up to be one forty dollars. Mm -hmm. But at the end of thirty four, at the thirty first of October twenty six, it was decided to write off Ansari Stores accounts too. Sorry from the business. Ansari is a credit customer. Yes. So Ansari is only Chandra. Yeah. Chandra. But now it's it's it looks as if Ansari is not going to pay back. So now Chandra decided to write it off. So the total of irrecoverable debt becomes 190. 
Mm. Yes or no? Yes. But how do you prepare? Yes, it becomes all night. Yes, yes. But that is not the stage now. The first stage is for you to prepare a journal for this irregular transaction. So what will be in your journal? The first thing that's going to be in your journal. The first thing that's going to be in your journal is irregular debt, which has just been decided on the 31st of October. So your irregular debt account will have a debit balance of $50. Who has the account? Ansari. So Ansari is not paying, right? Yes. Because Ansari is not paying, it is a credit. So Ansari's account has to close, has to be closed. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. So now you're going to open the incoming debt account. For incoming debt account, you have your $50 on the debit side in the journal, and the credit side will have $50. Then what is the narrative of that transaction? The right. transaction is written off in incurable debt for Ansari. That is done. Then they said, on the 31st of October, they created a provision for doubtful debt for 250. Yes or no? Yes. Provision for doubtful debt goes to your income statement in your profit or loss, on your profit or loss uh, session. Section, yes or no? Profit or loss section. What is this? You have your financial statement, right? Your income statement. Yes. You have the trading section, you have the profit or loss section. Yes. Provision for irrecoverable debt yes. is an expenses. So expenses expenses should be in the profit or loss yes. section. So it is decided, it has been decided that there should be provision for doubtful debt for amounted to $250, which is an expenses to the business, isn't it? Yes. So your journal entry will be the income statement will receive the two fifty dollars, isn't it? Yes, yes. Then the provision for doubtful debt account we'll will have a credit mm -hmm. of two fifty dollars. The analysis will be what creation of provision for doubtful debt. Is it clear? Yes. So that's how you prepare your journal. Your journal is done because decision two decisions were made. The first decision is to write off and sell account. It's a new decision. It's irregular. As soon as that, you note, know, we're talking about why we have a journal. We have journals because we want to record irregular accounts, irregular transactions in there. And Sari usually pay, but Sari is not paying right now. So it happens. So we need to create an account for that. But before we could create an account for that, we need to open a ledger. We need to write it in a ledger or in a journal, stating the reasons why we are opening that account. So in your journal, you'll be able to you'll be able to narrate it. Or oh, it has been decided by the business to write off Ansari's account because Ansari is not coming forth. So our journal will have uh irrecoverable debt, which is going to be debit. We're going to have Ansari's account on the credit. Then the narrative will be write off, writing off irrecoverable debt. That is done. The second decision was to create a provision for doubtful debt. A provision for doubtful debt is what? It's an expenses to the business, isn't it? Yes. Expenses should go to your profit or loss section in your income statement. So the debit side will have the income statement. The provision for doubtful debt will have yes. the credit entry. Then what is the analysis of the transaction? Creation of provision for doubtful debt. That is done. Now, you prepare a ledger as soon as the journal is done. You open this journal because of the two decisions we took. Yes or no? Yes. So the sales ledger now, because we sold on credit to Ansari. So the balance brought down is $50. The recoverable debt will have $50. That ends Ansari's account. You know, Ansari has a debit entry before because Ansari bought up for us. Ansari bought. So he didn't pay yet. So that's the balance of it, which is $50. Mm -hmm. But now we have to balance the account of Ansari. Assuming Ansari paid. If Ansari paid, it's going to be on the credit side. Yes or no? Yes. But Ansari didn't pay. He's not coming for. We have to pay. So it becomes irrecoverable debt. That's why he's on the credit side. As if Ansari paid, but he didn't pay. But we write it off. Then irrecoverable debt account itself. The value of Ansari. The value of Ansari and the total debt that I was written off goes to your irrecoverable debt account. 
you know, this is the end, year end, right? Mm -hmm. The year end, you have irrecoverable debts of totally 140. Mm -hmm. By the 31st of October, you finally decided to write off Ansari's debt. So summing it up to 190. So your irrecoverable debt account will have debtors written off of 190 mm -hmm. on the debit side. Then it will be on the income statement as expenses on the credit side. So this is transferred to your income statement, 190. Income statement in the debit side. On the credit side here, in your ledger. Oh, yeah, there in the... Yes, yeah. expenses. Yes, yes, it will sorry. be on the debit side of your income statement. I think it's clear. It's clear, right? This is the sales ledger. Yes. It said October 1st, balance put down. Yeah, except it... Yes. It's October 1st. This is the balance that was... And so he bought. Oh, yeah. He oh, bought, maybe he bought on the 1st of October, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of October, we decided that Ansari is not coming up. He's not paying. Yes, yes. So it, it's not going to be the same date. Ansari bought on the 31st, and you write it off on the 31st? No. Because yeah. they didn't mention it, that's why. Yeah, but you should know yeah. that that transaction would have occurred before the 31st of October. So the next account we open is the provision for doubtful debt accounts. So the provision for doubtful debt account will have a balance carry down of 250 on the debit side. Yes. Then the income statement will have 250 on the credit on the credit side. That is the amount that goes to your income statement, the provision for doubtful debt. 250. Yes. I think it's clear. Yes. Now the transaction continues. He said on 31st of October. 27. Chandra, Chandra agreed to accept equipment valued at $100 from Khalid in settlement of the debt, written off during the year end 31st of October. 100, valued at $100. Mm -hmm. Decided to increase the portion for that to debt to 310. Two things has happened here. Chandra is going to accept a debt settlement in terms of equipment for $100. Yes. So you're going to have a journal entry for that, which is debit. What is the item equipment, the debit transaction? So what is it for? Recovery of debts. So she agreed to accept the equipment. Right? Yeah, because Khalid is owing Chandra goods, is owing Chandra $100, which is part of the retail, the bad debt that was written off. Yes. But uh, uh, Khalid, uh, uh, Khalid agreed to pay, but he's paying with equipment, not cash. Mm -hmm. If it was cash, it would be written as cash. Yes. But yes. it's equipment. Yes. So getting equipment, the value of the equipment is $100. So equipment in the journal entry will have a debit entry of $100. Mm -hmm. On the credit side, you're not going to write Khalid anymore. You're going to write Debt recovery because you've canceled Khalid already. The, the Khalid's account has been closed. Yes. Because it's part of the debt. So debt recovery account will have $100 credit entry. Yes or no? Yes. So the analysis will be what equipment accepted the settlement of debt previously written off. Clear? Yes, yes. So what happens with your income statement? They, they decided to increase the provision for doubtful debt to 310. So in your income statement, provision for doubtful debt was increased, has been increased by 310 to 310. It was 250 before. So 310 minus 250 goes to your income statement. So you are adding, three, you are adding 60 to the income statement. Yes, because the income statement has $250. Yeah, already. Now you've decided to increase the income statement to 310. Yes, so that means you are adding 60. So the adjustment will be $60. The income statement will be having a $60 injection. Mm -hmm. Then you go back to your discovery, uh, debt. Now you have to open a debt recovery account. You know you have irrecoverable debt accounts. Yes. Because those debts we are written off. Now that a credit customer has paid, you need to open a debt recovery account for that. So the debt recovery account paid through equipment. So equipment will be a credit entry. Mm -hmm. And the income statement will have 
hundred dollars, which is the amount. Then, because equipment is an account, yes, you have to open the equipment account. Yes, sir. because now you are having additional assets. Equipment account, which we state as debt recovery, for hundred dollars. So was it June thirty and the other one I consented to so thirty first. That is the settlement. The transaction happens then. The transaction happens then. The transaction didn't happen October 31st. October 31st is the year end. Yes. The transaction happens in June. Do you get what I'm saying here? Yes, but it was before. It was after the transaction, after the, oh yeah, okay. The transaction happened in June. Yes, it's yes, not happening now. Yes, it's, yes. it's a previous transaction. Yes. So they will ask you, why do you have this equipment? What is this equipment for? The equipment is for a settlement of a transaction that has happened in June. Clear? Yes, yes. So then we go to our, we have to open the equipment account and we have to adjust the provision for that to that account. We have to adjust it. Do you know we have to adjust it? Adjust the the provision for doubt to debt account. Yes. We have to adjust it because of the $60. Yes, yes, yes. The provision for doubt to debt account is $250. Now, on October 4th, 31st, we have decided to increase it to 310 Yes or no? Yes. So the balance brought down is $250. The balance carry down will be $310. But the... 250 plus 60 mm -hmm. Because 250 is the balance. The income statement is having additional 60 Yes. So you had it all together. So you're going to have 310 in your income statement. That is what it means there. Yes. Is it clear or not? Yes. Sorry, please.